Hey everyone, welcome to TechLamp TV. In my last video, I talked to you about the InterSight infrastructure service at a very high level. And as promised, today I'm going to talk to you about the three different deployment options and then I'm going to jump right into InterSight and show you how to use it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the three different deployment options are the SaaS platform, our connected virtual appliance, and the private virtual appliance. We're all familiar with the most popular platform, which is the SaaS platform, right? I'm not going to talk too much about that. Basically, all your services and management are offloaded to Cisco. That's the greatest benefit of having the SaaS platform. And every week, Cisco is going to release security updates, bug fixes, new features. So all you need to do is just log into Intersight and start using it. That's why it's the most popular platform. But what if your environment is a little more strict? What if you have security parameters or network segmentation in place that prohibit your targets from talking to Intersight? How are you gonna do it then? That's where these two optional deployment options are available for you, the connected virtual appliance and the private virtual appliance. They are basically Intersight wrapped up in a virtual machine that you can deploy on-prem, okay? With the CVA model, the targets connect to CVA and CVA connects to Intersight, right? I'm going to talk more in detail about both the CVA and PVA here in a minute, but just at a high level, that's really what's going on. Targets connect to CVA, CVA connect to Intersight, and all the data that is uh, stored, all the data that Intersight has from your targets are stored locally on prem on that virtual machine, right? They're never gonna leave the VM. What is gonna leave the VM and go to Intersight is very, very small details that I'm gonna uh, post a link at the end of this video that you can grab and take a look at. But basically, it's gonna call out all the details of what is actually sent to Intersight. Very, very minuscule things like IP addresses, so on and so forth. So I'll have that link posted out there for you to find. Now, with the private virtual appliance, that is appropriate for uh, environments that are air-gapped, right? completely separate, segregated, air-gapped environments. The PVA would be the choice for you. Uh, with that one, it's again, a virtual appliance that is deployed on-prem, and basically you as the network administrator are gonna have to manually update the PVA. You're gonna get the VM, download it from Software Central, install it, update it, patch it, manage it. You know, uh, basically you're gonna be running around with uh, you know, a USB stick or whatever you use to transfer the data from one place, one place to the PVA. And that's basically how that one is done because it's completely strict, cut off from the world, strictly on-prem and uh, private that way for you. So that's the difference between CVA, PVA and our SaaS appliance. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about these deployment options and get a little bit more technical because I wanna to explain to you how they work. In order for a target to be managed by Intersight, two things have to happen. It needs to have a secure and reliable connection to the Intersight service and it has to have a northbound API in order to receive commands from Intersight. How does it do that? If you're using a Cisco device, such as UCS, Hyperflex, or FIs, it's gonna be really easy. Cisco embeds code into the hardware at factory called a device connector. This device connector only has one purpose in life, to connect securely to the Intersight service, okay? So when you get your device and you power it on and you connect it to the network, the device connector is gonna reach out to the Intersight cloud and it's gonna make itself available to be claimed by a unique Intersight account. Now, what happens if you don't have a Cisco device and you still want it to be managed by Intersight, a third party device? How are we gonna do that? Any device that is supported by Intersight but does not connect directly with it needs a connection mechanism. Intersight Assist is that connection mechanism. Intersight Assist helps you add endpoint devices to Intersight. It enables Intersight to communicate with targets that don't have a direct path to Intersight and don't have the device connector embedded. Intersight Assist communicates with the target's native APIs and serves as the communication bridge to and from Intersight. It's available via CBA, PVA, or the Assist-only appliance for SaaS users. Let's talk more about the CBA deployment. Remember, all targets connect to CVA as they are not allowed to go directly to intersight.com. And as you can see here, the non-Cisco targets are connecting to the assist function, which connects to the CVA service. 
and that connects to InnerSight via the device connector. And if you remember, I said that CVA needs to communicate with InnerSight periodically. This is so it can receive new alerts and update the hardware compatibility list, along with updating the CVA itself. But what happens if the connection is interrupted? If communication has been lost for 90 days, a critical fault is generated, but there is no functionality impact. And if 120 days have gone by, another critical fault is generated, and you won't be able to claim any more targets. Now let's finish up with the BVA. Remember, the BVA is used in an air-gapped environment. BVA is a self-contained, offline instance of InnerSight running on a virtual machine. It will not communicate with InnerSight.com. And in this scenario, the non-Cisco targets connect to the assist service, and it connects to the PVA service, and that's it. PVA does not have a device connector. So again, you will have to manually update and manage that PVA virtual machine. Okay, so I've talked to you about the different deployment options, and now I'm gonna get right into the demo. In this demo, I'm gonna review where to find key features, capabilities, and services that are available in the InnerSight platform. And then I'm gonna demonstrate the proactive and time-saving capabilities around day two ops. When you log into InnerSight, the first thing you will see is a dashboard. The dashboard provides a quick and easy way to determine the health of your infrastructure and allows you configuration access into the device. To navigate through the platform, just click on the Service Selector drop-down menu. Here, you can choose a service such as Infrastructure Service, Cloud Orchestrator, or even Workload Optimizer. Now, I'm going to talk more about Cloud Orchestrator and Workload Optimizer in a separate video. The System option is where you can go to configure different aspects of your InnerSight account. So let's take a closer look at System. On the left-hand side, you're going to see two areas, Settings and Admin. So right now we're in the settings area. And within settings, you can look at general account details. You can configure authentication such as single sign-on. You can manage your access and permissions. And you can also create API keys. Under admin, you can claim targets, review your audit logs, and even manage your licensing. All right, so now let's go back to the infrastructure service. When we're in the infrastructure service area, there are three things you need to familiarize yourself with. So on the left-hand side, we have overview, operate, and configure. Right now, we're in the overview section, which basically takes us to the dashboard. To perform day zero configurations and deployments, you wanna to go to the configure section. And to manage day two operations, you go to the operate section. So earlier, I mentioned that InnerSight has a superpower that allows you to be more proactive and save time when you're doing day two operations. So let's go ahead and spend a little bit of time reviewing that. And we all know how time consuming it is when you get notified about an advisory that impacts your servers. First, you have to identify the server models and make sure that you have them in fact and that they are impacted. You need to determine the firmware version and so on and so forth. So what if I can show you a more proactive way to handle this? InnerSight provides you with all the security advisories, field notices, and end of life advisories that you need right at your fingertips. So you no longer have to search for that stuff. And within the advisories, you can quickly identify which devices are impacted. Here we can see there are 19 devices that are impacted. They're all called out so we know which ones they are and it also tells you the solution to the problem. Now InnerSight also has alarms, and basically alarms are gonna let you know that there's something happening on your network right now that needs your attention. Something is massively wrong with part of your infrastructure, so you need to go in there and take care of it. Let's take a look at some day two operations we could do with server management. When you're in servers, you're gonna get a quick view of your inventory, and you can also complete common tasks, such as powering on and off your server, or maybe installing an operating system, upgrading firmware. Now, I know how much work 
goes into opening a tag case, right? All of us have done it at one point or another. It's going to involve gathering data, uploading logs, so on and so forth. What if I told you you could save time with that as well and have Intersight handle it for you? Intersight has what's called integrated TAC. And with that, you can quickly open a TAC case and Intersight will go ahead and manage it for you. It will upload the logs, it'll collect all the data points, everything that TAC needs to know to be successful in troubleshooting your environment will be sent to them straight from Intersight. Now that's a time-saving feature. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how you can quickly determine contract coverage status and your smart net status. So by going into one of these servers, I can get the details of them. And then by scrolling down, I'll be able to quickly identify contract coverage and last date of support. So now I'm always gonna be on top of that and it's never gonna lapse. Let's talk about the hardware compatibility list for a minute. Over time, we're gonna see many changes. For example, we're gonna see operating system changes. We're gonna be buying internal components and upgrading them, right? And so when we do that, there's gonna be drivers and firmware that are required and maybe we don't have the right ones at the right time. So to figure all this out, we're gonna to have to typically search the internet, go to Google, find a matrix that tells us about which device drivers you need with this type of hardware setup. So what if I told you that within Intersight, I could save all that time by going straight to the hardware compatibility list. In there, I can just click on get recommended drivers and put in the operating system vendor and the operating system version. And then it's gonna quickly come back and let me know which drivers I need. And I can even download it from here and get it installed. So that is another time-saving feature that I absolutely love about Intersight. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new about Intersight. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time.